Good evening, everyone. Good evening, guys. I'm so happy to see all of you at this time. The next recovery now is Mark Kanye. At this time, we are going to read the book of Matthew, chapter 13. I'm sure that God is going to bless us, bless us with His word. Matthew, chapter 13, from verse 47. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind. Which, when it was full, they drew to shore. And they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. And cast them into the furnace of fire, there will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Uh, this is the last parable of Jesus Christ in the Matthew chapter 13. It is talking about the end of the world. The Bible clearly says it is appointed for one to die once. After that, there is a judgment. No matter who may be, you know, we cannot avoid from the power of death. And one day no, we will die, and one day we will stand before God. And the Bible clearly says the wicked will be thrown into their furnace of fire. Which means the sinners will go to the hell fire. But the righteous will be welcomed by God and will be staying together with God in the heaven. When we read the Bible, we can clearly see that God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. We can say that this is the heart of God. I want to give you the blessing. I want to give you their grace. Now, this is the heart of God. If we read the Bible, there are you know, the couple of times that you know, the God sent kind of the judgment and the destruction. However, each and every the situation or each and every the judgment God always prepared the way of salvation. Yeah, the best example that we can take from the Bible is the story of Noah. As you know that God decided to you know, the destroy the whole world with a flood. If the, if the heart of God was just to destroy the human being, he would not you know, have told the Noah to make the ark. Because he, he did not need to wait. However, the heart of God was for people to change their heart and return to him. That's why you know, after God decided to destroy the world, God told the Noah because Noah he found the grace in the eyes of the Lord. Noah believed the judgment. Noah realized how evil human beings are. 
So people who realize their true figure, they could even find the grace in the eyes of God. Now we can clearly see how Noah he found the grace and he got the wisdom to make the ark. Dear brethren and dear viewers, remember that this the ark stands for Jesus Christ. So Noah only relied upon the ark. Noah only focused on the making the ark. Why? Because only the ark was the way of salvation. And the ark represented the Jesus. Even the time when God decided to destroy the Sodom and Gomorrah with the fire and the brimstone, God remembered the Lord. And at that time, the Lot and his family, they were able to be saved. Now you see, even though there was a judgment, God always prepared the way of salvation. Seven years of famine hit the whole world. But God did not want the people to die. Therefore, God prepared the Joseph. So the Joseph is the only one who could overcome this is a seven years of famine. So through Joseph, you know, the people they were able to overcome this seven years of famine. What about the story of Rahab? When the Joshua and his soldiers attacked the city of Jericho, now that this you know the judgment you know, the hit that city and everyone was dead. However, in the house of Rahab, where the promise of promise you know, the protected. Now we can see that you know, everyone in the house of Rahab, they were safe. Why? Because uh, that is the place of the salvation. Even in the time of Moses, you know, with the day of Passover, and the fiery serpent and bronze serpent, though the judgment came and the hit the, you know, the people, always God prepared the way of salvation. Now we are together with these works of Jesus Christ. We are Gentiles. However, Jesus Christ, he died for everyone in this world. Through that, you know, death of Jesus Christ, though we are Gentiles, but we are able to receive this free salvation. Through that crucifixion of Jesus Christ, even though we are dirty and we are filthy and we only commit the sins, it's not because we want, but because the, the power of sin is stronger than our will, our determination. That's why you see that you know, we, have, we have no choice but to be the uh, slave of sin. But through the crucifixion of Jesus Christ, we are able to overcome sin. 
We are able to be free from sin. And we are able to receive the new heart and new mind from Jesus Christ. So this is what God wants. This is the salvation that God wants to give us, each and every person. God desires all men to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. Unfortunately, there are many you know, who follow their own way. Though God prepared the way of salvation, the problem is that people follow their own way. People who trusted themselves, they refused to enter into the ark. People who followed their own understanding, they refused to put their blood on the doorpost and the lintel of the house. Though Jesus Christ, he died for our sins, Jesus even said that it is finished. <coughs> And what we are supposed to do is only believe what Jesus did for us. But still there are so many people you know, who believe in their thought more than the word of God. No, Bible clearly says that God is the righteous justice. And He is the, you know, the highest justice. If God says that, you know, that you are righteous, it means that you are righteous. When Jesus said that uh, this daughter of Jairus, is, she is not dead but sleeping, yeah, it means that that daughter, that girl was sleeping. When everybody was sad because of the death of Lazarus, and actually he had been in death for four, four, four days, but at the time Jesus you know, said that, Move the stone away. At the time, the Martha and the people around there, you know, they were you know, confused. Uh, Jesus, it had been four days since he died. Even there is a stench. Jesus did not listen to her. Why? Because in the eyes of Jesus, Lazarus was not dead. Why is that? Because Jesus said that this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. Now the people followed their own choice. But if you change your heart. And if you happen to follow the word of God, regardless of your understanding and regardless of your perspective, from that moment, you will be able to see the works of God in your life. In front of us, always there is the word of God and your own way. The blessing and curse. If you follow the word of God, even if it does not match with your understanding and your thought, if you unite your heart with the word of God, definitely this word of God will work, will never disappoint you. Now, in this parable of Jesus Christ, cast the net and catch fish. Well, here we can see that there are two kinds of fish. Good fish and bad fish. Yeah, good fish, of course, they will they collect the good fish and take. But bad fish, you know, they will be thrown away. 
What do you think is the criteria to make the good fish and bad fish? Probably many people think that oh if I live a good life I would be a good fish. If I live a bad life I would be a bad fish. Many people think that you know according According to my performance, my days, you know, that I would be a good fish or the bad fish. What does this mean? That people use their own standard. But the Bible clearly shows us the standard of God. Because God already, already said in the Bible that Human heart is evil continually. According to our standard, we may have sometimes good and sometimes evil. However, according to the standard of God, you know that we are evil continually. So with our own performance, with our own deeds, we have no choice but to be evil continually. So how can we be the good fish and to be uh, collected by by the master. And for that, we need to know the standard of God. Because the standard of God is different from the standard of man. Let us open to the book of John, chapter 8, verse 47. He who is of God hears God's words. Therefore, you do not hear because you are not of God. So now here, you know, the Jesus Christ, he introduced the standard of God. Whether you are of God or not, that is important. If you are of God, you would hear the word of God. It's not just talking about the hearing with your ears. Jesus was talking about the hearing with your heart. Unite your heart with the word of God. Because the Bible clearly says that our thoughts are different from the thoughts of God. That's why even though we listen to the word of God, always we have the certain thought which are against which resist the word of God. So in order for us to receive the word of God in our heart, that thought must be ignored. To ignore that humanistic thought, that is called repentance. In other words, denying yourself. By denying yourself, you will be able to be ready to receive the word of God in your heart. So according to the standard of man, who is the bad man and who is the good man? Yeah, probably the bad man is the ones you know, who did the bad things. And good man man is the ones you know, the, who do the good things. And yeah, that is the standard of a human being. That is the rule of this world. But what does the Bible say? What is the standard of God? Who is the good man and who is the evil man? The Bible says one who is of God hears the word of God. So one who you know, comes uh, 
their heart, one who brings their heart together with the word of God is the good. Regardless of what you what thought you have. Regardless of what judgment you have, you listen to the word and unite your heart with that word of God. Let us go back to the Matthew chapter 13. We can read verse 49. So it will be at the end of the age, the angels will come forth separate the wicked from among the just. Here the Bible clearly says the angels will come forth. Of course the angels they work for God. Therefore they will definitely come with standard of God. They will not judge you, they will not separate you, you know, according to the standard of man. They will not check whether you did, whether you live the good life or the bad life. They will check whether you listen to the word of God and unite your heart with it or or not. I got to the many chances to meet the different people and have the individual you know, the spiritual fellowship. Sometimes you know, I meet the people who have been very diligent to serve God and to believe in God. Pray hard and fasting many times. They try their best to you know, serve God and believe in God. But the problem is they still have condemnation in their heart. They still have the fear in their heart because of sin. Oh, one lady that I met, you know, the, she she used to they wake up in the four in the morning and rush to the church for their prayers. She, you know, prayed all the sin that she committed the previous day. In order to be free from sin, in order to be free from that condemnation. Even though she did, she did this in order almost to Three years, four years. However, she continuously had the condemnation in her heart. Why do you think this lady, you know, she had the condemnation in her heart? Because she used the standard of a human being. At that time, you know, I introduced the standard of God. How God judged us according to the blood of Jesus Christ. As she was listening to the word of Jesus, the word of God, as she was listening to the the work about the work of Jesus Christ. Now she could realize that ah, her, her thought was wrong. The way that she took it was wrong. It was different from the Bible. And she could set herself in front of the standard of God. And she could receive the gospel in her heart. Many people they stand, they try to stand before God with their own standard. Many will say to me in that day, in the day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, 
done many wonders in your name. God, we did a lot of good things for you. We did a lot of works for your name's sake. Yeah, probably according to the eyes of people, according to even their eyes, Oh, they would think that they are good believers. What does the Bible say? What did Jesus say at that time? Depart from me, I never knew you. Why do you think Jesus said so? I never knew you. It is because they were standing, they were trying to stand before God with their, their own standard, not with the standard of God. If you read the book of Acts chapter 10, there is a man named Canarius. You see that you know, the Canarius, you know, he was really, really dedicated person and uh, even the devout man. Everybody praised him so much. Why? Because he was really, really good man. He really loved God. Even he really helped the people. However, in the eyes of God, he was not saved. That's why God decided to send the Peter to him. And Peter, you know, he preached the gospel to him. Why? According to the standard of man, you know, the Canarius is a really good believer. But according to the standard of God, you know, he was not yet saved. Dear viewers, what kind of standard do you believe and do you stand on? If you live according to the standard of man, you will judge each and every issue according to the standard of man. If you do the good performance, you will be bold to stand before God. If you live a good life, you would think that ah, God is going to help me, God is going to work for me. But if your weakness is revealed, if you fall into the temptations, you would definitely lose their boldness. And you try to run away from the God. Just as Adam and Eve, after they took the fruit of knowledge of good and evil, they tried to hide themselves before God. They lost the freedom to stand before God. Tried themselves. Are we together? This is very much important. If you try to stand before God with your standard, definitely you will lose the boldness. How can we have the boldness to stand before God? If you look at yourself, yes, sometimes you may do good. Sometimes you may have have the burning heart to work for God. However, human heart changes. Your heart is not trustworthy. That's why the Bible clearly says, do not trust yourself. Even the the, your, the your heart, whether it looks good or bad, 
deny yourself when we believe in God we should not trust ourselves if you want to stand before God you should not hold your performance because God accepts only one what is it that God accepts? Only the works of Jesus. Only the blood of Jesus. When you accept the blood of Jesus, when you accept the works of Jesus in your heart, and when you stand before God with the works of Jesus Christ, as Bible says, God is ready to welcome you. Why? Because Jesus is the only one that God is pleased with. So when you stand before God with His blood of Jesus, when you stand before God with the works of Jesus, God, I do not have faith. I am weak. I'm easily exposed to the temptation of the fleshly desires. But you know that I am with Jesus. Jesus, he died for my sins. Not only just saving me from my sins, he is with me right now. Even on until the end of the world. I'm standing before you in the name of Jesus. I believe that Jesus is at, at work for me. So when you have this faith, God has no choice but to receive you. God has no choice but to welcome you and work for you. We Christians, first of all, we believe that Jesus Christ, He died for our sins. Because of that works of Jesus, we become righteous. We become holy. Why? Because Jesus became for us the wisdom from God, redemption and justification and sanctification. After we received this salvation, now we believe that Jesus is with us. As Jesus is the light of the world, also the we who live with Jesus and live as a light of the world. Dear brethren, speak after the word of God. Speak the word of hope. And God is listening to your word. Because Jesus is the one to let you speak the word of faith. Faith life is very easy and simple. Because it's not done by you, but by Jesus Christ. Remember that Jesus Christ, He is with you and ready to work for you. I really hope that you believe in this. I will speak up to here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you. You have given us this precious evening. You allowed our brothers and sisters and viewers 
to have this uh, this you know the meeting i believe that through this time we are able to be blessed by your word allow this message to be settled in our heart so that this word can dominate us and conquer us and lead us I pray everything in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. See you next time.